Welcome to Point of Grace Lutheran Church here in Muckleteal, Washington this Sunday morning. I am so grateful for your attendance and for your participation in worship this morning. You can find the bulletin on our website, pointofgrace.org, and in that bulletin you'll find all the readings and the songs and the words for prayer so that you can completely and wholly follow along in a Sunday morning. This is a place where we say it is open and welcome to all, and it is my deepest desire and prayer that you will find a welcome and a place here. Let's begin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, rich in mercy, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world and rescued us from the hopelessness of death. Lead us into your light, that all our deeds may reflect your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Numbers. From Mount Hor they set out by the way to the Red Sea, to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalm 107, verses 1 through 3, 17 to 22. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good, for God's mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord proclaim that God redeemed them from the hand of the foe, gathering them in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some were fools and took rebellious paths, though their sins, through their sins, they were afflicted. They loathed all manner of food and drew near to death's door. Then in their trouble they cried to the Lord, and you delivered them from their distress. You sent forth your word and healed them and rescued them from the grave. Let them give thanks to you, Lord, for your steadfast love and your wonderful works for all people. Let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and tell of your deeds with shouts of joy. A reading from Ephesians. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, 
created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The word of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Growing up, I was surrounded by the medical profession. When I was young, my dad worked as a first aid medic in the logging camps in northern British Columbia. Then he taught first aid at the local college. My stepmom was a registered nurse. Our dinner conversations were what some might class a bit graphic in nature. Blood and guts didn't make me nervous as I chewed my food and listened in on these conversations. Most of us might know that the universal medical symbol is a snake coiled around a staff. I find it interesting. We automatically reference snakes in the Bible as something which will harm us. But here, in the first reading from the book of, Mo of Numbers, Moses is asked to take something which is known to harm and kill, and it becomes something which heals. The Israelites were a grumbly bunch. In a way, they remind me of the children's fable of Goldilocks and the Three Bears, never quite happy with what was there. They grumbled about not having food to eat. And yet they had manna fall from the sky every day. They wanted comfort and stability and were willing to go back to Egypt to be in bondage and enslaved. They were free and in the open wild, but it was not good enough because it was unpredictable. They had food, they had freedom, but it was not how they wanted it. Too cold, too hot, not quite right. And for their grumbling, the snakes were sent and bit them. Have you ever grumbled like our ancestors, the Israelites? I know I have. But what's interesting is that the grumbling and snake bites happened. Then Moses was called to build a bronze snake on a staff to heal the people. But God did not remove the snakes. Maybe the lesson is there will always be snakes. There will always be a presence which reminds us of our sin, of our grumbling. But what we look to for healing, a symbol which we think will harm, actually will do our healing. We don't like to look upon things which cause pain and suffering. Maybe those are the blood and guts. Maybe it's a snake or a cross. Both a snake and a cross have been used to harm and kill, but they also have represented immense healing. I like that the medical symbol is a snake wrapped around a staff. 
It reminds us that we sometimes have to face our greatest ailments and sicknesses head on. Our greatest sins head on. We can't ignore them. Maybe these symbols aren't just about punishment or payment, but about healing. Our worldly systems of racism and oppression are no different. We must face them head on. We cannot ignore them. And yes, in facing these sins, it hurts. It literally bites and it hurts. It hurts to realize that our white privilege allows us to get paid more than our brothers and sisters of color. It hurts to realize that we get to live without fear of police violence usually or have the freedom to purchase a house wherever we want without neighbors looking down on us while people of color have not had these same experiences or privileges. For the most part, we are not talked down to like people of color or thought less than, like so many have. This is the racism snake. This last week was the International Women's Day, another snake which has reared its ugly head in our times where equality is far from perfect. Pay grade and opportunities are not the same for women and men and even more disparities for women of color. And then there's the latest bill in Mississippi where the governor is about to ban all transgender athletes from high school sports in order to protect the girls. An ongoing battle for the LGBTQ snakes. People, we are in many ways still in the wilderness. We grumble and yet we have everything we need. Our sins are the snakes which plague us. And we have an abundance of snakes an abundance of sins which bite us and bite our siblings. But we cannot ignore these snakes. We cannot ignore these sins of the world and of our societal systems. In many ways, we must make them front and center and stare at them hard and head on. That is the only way to be healed, to be rid of them. And as Moses raised the serpent on the staff to heal his people, God raised up Jesus on a cross to heal all people too. Too often I wonder if we think of that lifting up as only a sad moment, a disastrous moment, when Jesus was lifted up actually to also be glorified and to be an example of God's love for all. It was only out of God's love that the gift of Jesus was even given for the healing of all, for our wholeness. I recently heard a friend share the adoption story of his son. The birth mother had a special ceremony prepared just a couple days after giving birth to her Korean son. Each birth family member present and friends held the infant in their arms and spoke a blessing over him. Then they passed him along to the next person in the circle. Finally, it was the grandfather's turn to bless and say goodbye to this baby boy. And as he spoke words of love over him, sharing that there was a greater plan to unfold for his life ahead and that he loved him dearly and he would be a gift to so many, a tear fell from the grandfather's eye and landed on the bridge of the baby's nose. When the grandfather handed over the child to my friend, the, the tear still rested on the baby's flattened bridge of his nose. It was a gift of love, a gift to share, a handing over, even lifting up as a gift to another for their own wholeness. My friends, there have been many tears this last year. Tears shed for what we have lost, both life and livability, and even parts of ourselves. But we also have been blessed. We have been blessed to see some mighty, nasty snakes in the tall grasses, which we thought we could ignore and keep hidden. We can grumble, but that doesn't remove the snakes. This last year, much of our country's inequity and oppressive systems 
have been revealed again. Racism and white supremacy have reared their ugly heads. Homelessness and food insecurities abound beyond comprehension. The hunger for money and success have superseded the feeding of the hungry. The appearances and wealth of the elite have blinded the visibility of the forgotten and unwanted. Sometimes we must lift up and look upon what the world says is horrific and see where God rehabilitates it to be something which brings forth life. By looking at our own ugliness, hung on a cross, facing it, not hiding from it, then we can find new life. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up to be glorified and be an example of God's love for all, so that whoever trusts in this love may have wholeness and completeness of life. For God so loved the world that he handed over his only Son as a gift for the healing of all, so that all who trust in this gift of love may not die into their own shadow and darkness. For we love to hide in our shadows and darkness and not entirely face the light of life and love. We fear the light because it discloses and reveals our sin, our confusion and despair. It moves us to a place of transformation and change. And that can be a fearful idea for many. It lifts up our need for God's grace and love and forgiveness. And yes, the cross is a visible sign of God's love for all of creation, for all, for the whole world. Even in the wilderness, all are loved. Even in our shadows, we are loved. It's hard to not make God like us. And we do make God out to be more about us and like us, about punishment than love sometimes. We often take a verse in scripture and make it about judgment and condemnation than how it's really about giving grace and life. God is an all loving creator who wants nothing more than for us to face our snakes head on and be healed, to be whole again. This is what eternal life is. It's trusting in God, trusting in God's unconditional love, it's about being changed and transformed. I come to give life and to give it abundantly. Be changed, my dear ones. Be raised up and be, be the change in the world. Amen.
relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. You sent your Son into the world that the world might be saved through him. Inspire the witness of the church throughout the world. Empower missionaries, Bible translators, and ministries of service in your name. Bless our partners in ministry, our ELCA Global Partner Churches, and young adults in global mission. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. From east to west, your steadfast love is shown. Nourish seas and deserts, wilderness areas and cities. Give water to thirsty lands. Nurture spring growth that feeds hungry creatures. Bless farmers as they prepare for the growing season. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You sustained your people in the wilderness. Give courage to all who lead in times of crisis and scarce resources. Prosper the work of those who aid victims of famine and drought. Bring peace in places where scarce resources cause violence. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Your mercy endures forever. Deliver all who cry to you, especially those who are hungry or without homes. Give life in places where death seems triumphant. Give healing to those who are sick and comfort to those who mourn, especially Rick, Victoria, Don and Valeria, Steve, Paul, and Diane. Strengthen doctors, medical care workers, and caretakers who see to their needs. We pray your guidance, Lord, for our church council and ministry leaders. Lord, sustain all those who work as chaplains and provide for all refugee and immigrant families. Give relief for those affected by natural disasters and for those suffering from any form of mental illness. Wrap your loving arms, Lord, around those who grieve the death of loved ones and provide your calm and comfort to all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. By grace we have been saved. Fill this congregation to overflowing with that grace, that we may show mercy to others. Nourish any in our midst who are hungry, especially children, and bless our ministries of feeding and shelter, especially packs for kids. Give us patience and courage when the way seems long. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Your Son was lifted up, that whoever believes might have eternal life. We praise you for all who have died in Christ. Bring us with all the saints into the fullness of your promises. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
The peace of the Lord be with you all. You all. And, and also, also with you. you. We are so blessed with so much, all which comes from God. And so at this time, as we prepare our tables, we prepare ourselves and our hearts as well for the feast that is to come. And in preparing for that, we offer up ourselves, our time, our talents, and our monies. So I invite you at this time, not only to set your table with bread or crackers, wine or juice or water, but you also prepare for this feast by bringing your own offering of fruits of your own. And so you may pause this video at this time, not only to set your table at home, but also to give an offering. Because Jesus' ministry is more than a building, more than meeting at a certain time. It continues in feeding programs and Bible studies and so much more. And so I invite you now, as you are able, to give good and all the grace that you have that comes from God in worship to him. Let's pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way that all may know your care and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We are all one in the body of Christ. No matter where or when we meet, Christ is not limited by a building and Christ is not limited by our own time restraints. I truly believe that if we say God is the Alpha and the Omega, God was, is, and will be, that God is not confined by us. God is present at all times and in all places. And with that, I trust and believe that as I celebrate this meal here at this altar table, and you are at your homes, at your tables, Christ is present in all places. His grace is beyond our fathomability. And whenever you view this, God is present. I truly trust and believe in that. God is not bound by us in any way. God continues to reach to us, seeking us over and over in all times and in all places. So if you haven't already, I encourage you to pause this video Set your table at home. Set a place where it is a special place. It is an altar. It is a table, a feasting place for Christ to come and be present. A uh, plate with bread or crackers, a cup with juice or wine or water. It really doesn't matter what the elements you have because Jesus' word is where the promise is held for forgiveness of sins, and for love of all. So, let's start with communion. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, 
broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. And so we pray united as one as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus draws the whole world to himself. Come to this meal and be fed. At this time, I invite you in your own homes, if you are with somebody, to share communion using the words, the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. God of steadfast love, at this table, you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us now in the power of your spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now for a few announcements. Oh goodness, today we have a huge farewell and Godspeed to Dan Jensen. And so if you are able to meet us in the parking lot at church at 1030, we will caravan over to his house locally and hold signs and balloons. Um, if you have cards that you would like to gift him and things of that nature before he moves to the other side of the state, um, please come and share that wonderful farewell and God's speed and blessing to him as he leaves and um, heads over to the east side of our state. Also, other announcements. Uh, today is Pi Day, 3.14 and all the numbers that go after that for all eternity. Um, directly after worship for our drive-in worshipers and for those who are at home, if you'd like to, we will have a pie table distribution. So bring a store-bought pie. When you drop that off on the front table, you will draw a number and that will be the number of order that you get to pick your pie off the table. It may or may not be the pie you came with, but this is a fun way for us to celebrate pie day and fellowship and everyone leaves with a treat. Other announcements, um, lots still happening. Please check your bulletins um, in the back for the calendar and our Grace Notes newsletter, which are online or emailed to you. Women's Bible study continues. We're getting ready for Holy Week. Um, youth group is meeting in person 
and we're starting to look towards our congregational meeting on May 23rd and summer plans for Vacation Bible School and so much more. So please uh, stay apprised of what's happening. But for now, we have Adult Forum directly after Fellowship Time, which is on Zoom. Both of those links are on our website. And we look forward and encourage you to join in Fellowship and Adult Forum following worship. So I hope to see you all soon there. God bless. And now for the sending prayer. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, free to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen.
Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.